what's up all that family but the day has come for us to shoot x-ray this is one of the most stressful things about being a welder a lot of people be saying that we get a lot of money we get paid more than other crap but what they don't know is that every time we close that pipe up man our job's on the line but all it takes is for you to fail two of them and you out of here you no know, i had plenty of nights when i was starting off in my career where i would just be at home thinking man did I turn the purge on? Did I turn it off? Was it too high? I would be afraid going to my job the next day. Luckily, uh, I've been having a pretty good uh, x-ray rate throughout my career. We have shooting nine of my welds. I think it's all stainless schedule 10, so we'll see how that goes. For the guys that are just trying to get into welding, there's a lot of things that y'all might not think that will pass x-ray. It's a lot. For stainless, it's a little bit more strict. You can't have no cold wire. Uh, you, can't, you can't hang too much. And of course, you can't have no porosity. You gotta have good tie-ins but with carbon dude you'll be surprised how much tolerance carbon has i didn't see in pipes where the root was kind of sucked in all the way from the, bo the bottom big old chunks here like look like shit and they'll still shoot x-ray it's crazy uh, later on i'll do a video on what passes the x-ray and what doesn't but i'm about to uh, go flag some of my wells up right now get the x-ray uh truck ready to come in so i'll see you on the bit and the unemployment truck has arrived guys so they're about to get ready to shoot some of my uh, three inch stainless. Uh, what y'all think? Am I gonna bust? Everything's gonna be good? I'm gonna fail? What y'all think? Let me know, man. Let me know in the comments before you see the results. I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen though. So let me go hurry up and get these guys set up and I'll get back with y'all. What's up guys? It's actually the next day, but guess who ain't throwing no x-rays? Your boy Rico. I ain't got no bad x-rays. Like even the best water still x-ray, but everything's so good on this side. So right now what I got going on, I got the six inch schedule of 40 that I'm about to do. Now, I would have showed y'all how to uh, fix the x ray, but I ain't felt none. So, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm about to let my guy uh, Sosa, he's one of my fitters, he's about to try to run the bead on there. So, I'm gonna let him run the bead. Most likely, he ain't gonna do too good. So, I'm gonna show you how to fix the root, but I'm gonna try to teach him, man. Uh, hopefully, I'm able to teach him how to do a little something. So, hey, you ready, Sosa? I'm trying, man. All right, let's go. And just drag it down way you see you gotta have that rod on there like that all right you ready yeah you put your hood up whenever you start way you're gonna start like this mm -hmm. whenever you get to right here you kind of just tilt it down a little bit you want to keep that angle right there a little bit above 90. this 90 degrees a little bit above 90. Push it in, push it in, push it in. There you go, there you go. Now drag it down. Keep pushing it in, slow down, slow down. There you go, keep going, keep going. Just drag it down. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Keep dragging it down. There you go. Ah! Check them out, check them out. Check them out, check them out. Drop down, drop down. Drop it, there you go, drop your body down. Keep drop, keep dropping your body down. There you go. Alright, you can stop. Man, put that beat in the boy. Damn, hey, that was good. That was good, that was good. Hey, not bad, bro. You, you did good, though, you did good. Remember what I said. Let's see how good you could do. Your hood, wait, where's your hood at, bro? <laughs> what the fuck, man? You gotta put your hood on. It don't even work, but it's Damn, bro, you so good, you don't need a hood? Okay, so he just laid down the root. He did okay for his first time. For with a couple of tricks and, and pointers, he was able to lay down a decent uh, root. For the, all the guys that are still trying to learn, all you need is proper guidance. You just need somebody to show you how to do it. I guarantee you, if I was to get down with him every day for a week, he'll be laying out a perfect bead by the end of the week. So what I'm about to do now, I'm about to go ahead and grind the root down. And whenever you grind the root, you should be able to see all the flaws and everything where you messed up at. So I'm gonna show you how to fix the root if you ever come a situation where uh, it's messed up or you test it and something goes wrong. So let's get to the grinding. Okay, so I grinded the bead down and I found a bad spot where he has a hole. So I'm not gonna show you the whole 
thing, the whole everything that I fixed, but just one one piece of the pipe so yeah, I get an idea how to fix the root if you come across this. If you want to fix a root, you grind it, you grind your bead down until it's blue on where you want to fix it. But uh, in this case, he has a hole, which is real, real easy. All you have to do is grind it back down, take everything out, and uh, once you grind everything nice and clean, you will start about an inch on top and just drag it all the way down until you fill that hole back up. Now, uh, the temperature that I suggest for you to do to fix the root is to go back to the same temperature that you started off doing the root. For example, if you started at 75, go back to 75 and close that hole up. It's my fault. Start an inch behind, you start pushing it in. Push it, push it, push it. And there you go, just keep dragging it down. Just keep dragging it down. Keep dragging it down until you tie in, you keep going, keep going. Bam, that's all you gotta do guys, real easy. Okay, so I just did my high pass. I did it on 60 on my fine tune, third gear on my machine. I used a 532 6010. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do another 6010 pass to flush it out. Uh, for the guys, I have a lot of guys who watch me like from different countries saying it's illegal to run downhill, but out here in the United States, we do 6010 downhill all the time and it's whipped in cold. I know in y'all country, I think everything is uphill, but that's what we do out here. I don't know if y'all seen my other well that I got on over here. I had did that one earlier. That one was a rollout well. A rollout well. I actually like doing those a lot because it's a lot of fun. All you do is sit on top. Uh, the way I did this one was I sat on top of the 6010 and dragged it all the way down. And I rolled the pipe with my chain clamp. I kept on rolling it. Then I did two, uh, two fills with 6010 but I capped that one with 532 on 90 on my fine tune. Man, it started to rain on us like a motherfucker. I was trying to show y'all more footage on how I got down on that pipe, but I finished it out. It came out, it came out okay. I was trying to hurry, like I said, this rain was coming down. I ended up using a one eighth the cap, 50 on the fine tune, and all I did was quarter it. I flipped it back and forth, the one eighth, 70, 18, and a done deal. So now, hopefully I get to get those supports. Hopefully they don't rain us down and send us home. But yeah, man, uh, I wanted to show you how to fix roots. Uh, I let my fitter get down. Every job I go to, I try to get the little homies an opportunity to uh, weld. Because I know when I was coming up, I was still a helper. really appreciate the welders that actually let me weld their pipes or structure or whatever it was. It really helped me out a lot, man. And I know they go out their way. They went out their way to help me. So I got out my way to help anyone who's trying to learn how to weld. If you ever get to work with me, if they have a vent pipe like we got now or structure or anything that's not uh, high pressure or get x-rayed, I'll definitely let you weld it and I'll help you out as much as I can. As you can see, my fitter did pretty good, man, for the first time, man. I know a lot of guys out there struggle with 6010, but all you need is a proper training. I guarantee you within the week, you'll be burning that 6010. And then, as you can see, I can take my hood off and put a bead in. I'm not gonna say it's going 100% good, but I could do a nice, uh, I could burn a rod or two without having to look at it because it's all in the highest fills and the sound. But with x-ray guys, everybody feels x-ray. Uh, a long time ago, I was working out of town. I drove like 20 some hours. I got there. I had to wait a whole nother week to get drug tested because I didn't make it on time. Then it was only drug testing on certain days. I got the room. It was expensive as hell too. It was a small, it was a small town, but it was booming at the time with a whole bunch of work. So they was charging, man, if I don't remember, I think I was paying almost three grand a month for the hotel. So I went ahead and took my well test. The same day I passed, all they did was a bent test, didn't even x-ray. I started doing my production wells. I had to do three production welds and I got down on them. Once you did your production wells, you had to wait until you got the results. And what sucked about that job, sometimes it'll take them two weeks to x-ray. So they will try to send you home for the two weeks until uh, you get the results. But I had a really good uh, foreman. He actually looked out for me and he had told the rest of the supervisors that I was gonna stay in well structure. I ended up failing my production welds, man. I failed, they say that I failed on a three inch uh, schedule 40. 
and they saying they have prosody. The reason why I'm saying they saying is because I had some QCs telling me that I passed because I was actually friends with a QC out there and he 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 was the one who came up to me in the morning and said, hey man, you're good, you're good, the well now all the production wells passed. And later on that day, they had a supervisor who came and told me that I felt. And when I went into the office, I was sitting there trying to see what's up and I was hearing one of the supervisors tell another welder that he had more bad x-rays that he cannot keep looking out for him on on keep uh, he cannot keep looking out for him he's gonna keep on feeling x-ray so it makes me feels like they switched me they, they switched my uh stencil over or they did some shady shit simply because how i had some people telling me that i passed and some people saying that i don't didn't pass but what i want to tell y'all is that everybody feels x-ray you know uh you can do things to prevent it you know one thing for uh me and my experience for tig you always fell for porosity i believe that's number one thing because that's usually what i see you never hardly ever fell for missing a wall especially with TIG. Uh, so if you're doing TIG, man, make sure nobody, no, nobody's stepping on your arm on holes. Make sure you run it overhead uh, on trees or whatever so nobody bends it or stops the flow, especially when you're doing stainless. That's my tip to y'all. But it was crazy, man. I, I was sad, dude. I, I came home. Well, I called my wife. I was like, hey, man, I, I feel my production loads. We gotta go home. It just sucked, dude, because we spent a whole bunch of money coming up there, plus the hotels, plus just being out there and it's just mentally exhausting. But Everything happened for a reason. I ended up coming home and finding a job within like a week. I was able to bounce back. But guys, don't get discouraged when you felt extra is helping to all of us. Matter of fact, when I first started out welding, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I was still a helper, but I still wanted to try out. And I was just jumping, man. I, every time I get out, somebody will call me, hey, we're looking for welders. They'd be like, yep, I can do it. Even though I knew I couldn't do it, I still wanted to go try and test. I think I failed my first six tests, which was crazy. But, you know, it happens. You have to jump out there. Don't be scared, guys. Uh, I know a lot of people might be scared to leave a shop or jump into the field, but I mean, you just got to jump and make sure that you do it smart and don't do it stupid, you know, because that could backfire on you, especially if you have a family, you know, if you lose your job, you can't provide for them, but make sure you do it in a smart way. But man, yeah, man, that was a crazy time in my life, but everything happens for a reason. Now I'm, you know, I'm out here still making it. We're almost done with this job. It's a matter of time before they let us go and get laid off because this job is done supposedly. We'll go home and sit down for a month or two then call us back up here to uh, do the next plan for a three or four month project or whatever. So I don't know what's gonna happen. So for now, I guess you can see it's still raining. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, probably, probably just wait for the, so what I'm gonna do now is probably just wait for the rain to stop, man. And there's nothing that we can really do. So that's pretty much it. These are some of the uh, x-rays that they took of my welds. Let's see if you can see that. Some sketch of 10, two inch, everything shot good. So, yeah. Man, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like I said, probably the next video y'all see, man, is gonna be laid off. So let's see what the weld lab does after that. But I'll see you in the next one. Peace.